Welcome to the Conscious Fire Culture. We give you direct access to healers, practitioners, and shamans as we explore alternative medicine for wildland firefighters. The mission is to break the stigma of mental health in wildland fire and lower the suicide rates. Our intention is to guide you through a transformation that creates a ripple effect in our community. Welcome, I'm so excited you've made it. All right, check this out. Mountain Mind Tricks and the Wildland Wellness Foundation are coming together for this amazing collaboration. This is gonna be the most powerful thing to come to the wildland fire community in a long time, I think. And that is, you know, master plant ceremonies mixed with holistic medicine, with acupuncture, chiropractor, so the breakthrough session, all these things coming into one to support you, the wildland firefighter, to help you regain your mental health, your physical health, and get back to peak performance as soon as possible. Because when we work with master plants and essential oils and acupuncture and chiropractic and mental emotion release, when we put all these together, it is a powerful transformational experience that really it's it's beyond words because once you're touched by the divine once you're in touch with that healing energy of the universe with that innate power for you to heal yourself there's no stopping it it's like a runaway train it's like you're gonna start healing you're gonna have a transformation that has this ripple effect that goes beyond just you and your family but to your crew to your fire station to your you know your workstation to your forest to your region to the community and really what we want to do is is give you the most amazing ceremonial experience and back that up with the integration how do you take those experiences and come back to 3d reality and implement them implement those lessons those realizations that are so deep and profound that your entire life changes how do you integrate those you know one of my great mentors once told me it's like you get a puzzle and all the pieces are all spread out but then you get to start putting that puzzle back together into a new way a new possibility a new way of being and that's that's what that foundation is working on you know the first retreat is the end of january of 2022 and if that's interesting to you, I want you to go to the wildlandwellnessfoundation.com. Check that out. And just schedule a call with Melissa and see if it's a good fit. Again, that's wildlandwellnessfoundation.com. The foundation of Mountain Mind Tricks is the breakthrough sessions for wildland firefighters. And it's one of the most rewarding things I've ever done in my entire life is to guide somebody through an awakening experience, remembering that they have the power to heal and giving them the tools to release the anger, sadness, fear, hurt, and guilt from their past and to truly release it, to let it go. And when I see these transformations in my clients, it's like night and day. There's before the breakthrough session and then there's after. And there's just so many times that their transformation touches me that I, I cry. Like it, it's so powerful and joyful to see that transformation inside them. And and there's there's so many modalities out there. There is acupuncture and traditional therapy and plant medicine. And I love the breakthrough session. I think it's an amazing adjunct to all these other things, or even Western medicine. And the breakthrough session is so important to me because it's what changed my life. It's what allowed me to completely let go of my anxiety and to move forward and to become the healer that I am today, to start my own company, Mountain Mind Tricks. Like that's that's because of the breakthrough session. Without that, there wouldn't be any of this. And so if you're interested in a breakthrough session to really overcome the blocks in your life, to let it all go, to really step into your light and be who you know you could be. If you want that to happen for you, just go to mountainmindtricks.com, go ahead and click that button, alternative mental health, scroll through there if it looks like something you want. Let's, let's schedule a discovery session, let's just chat about it, let's have a talk to make sure it's a good fit. So again, go to mountainmindtricks.com and click the alternative mental health button. Welcome everybody to the podcast, I'm so excited to have Destiny DeHaven with us. A practitioner of SRT and NLP, and of course, Ann Martin, our co-host. And 
Destiny, can you introduce yourself? And in, in, I know you call yourself the pattern breaker and bullshit detector. Like, I love this, but how, how did you get into this type of work? Like, what was that journey like? Hi, Thomas. Hi, Anne. First of all, thank you so much for having me on board. Um, my journey actually looked like uh, growing up in a very angry household uh, when I was younger. Uh, basically, I recognized that if I cried, um, then I better have a reason to cry. Otherwise, I would be given one. Or if um, I was super proud or happy about you know something that I did or something I accomplished, then I was bragging. So neither of those emotions were safe. So I chose anger and anger kept people at a distance. It kept me safe. It kept me in a place where I didn't really have to deal with a whole lot. However, as you grow up, uh, it tends to ruin a lot of relationships. And my husband and I, we weren't even married yet, um, but he was going through a number of health issues before we were scheduled to be married. And I'm talking like six months prior to our wedding and I wanted out and I was like, I didn't sign up for this crap. And uh, we went to a personal development class, uh, which just shifted my thought process and reframed a lot of things for me. And one of the instructors there happened to uh, be a NLP. Uh, he taught NLP. And so uh, I, I followed that kind of journey with him and stayed in that personal development world and took like a 90 day class uh, where, you know, you're supposed to get your goals and all of this stuff. And that instructor was like, you know, you would be really good at this. You would be really good at coaching, uh, really good at uh, instructing. And I think you should look into it. And at the time, I didn't even know who Tony Robbins was. I'm like, what are you even talking about? Um, and from that, I took his NLP class and just absolutely fell in love with it. And I've been doing that for about 10 years now. And realized maybe about two or three years ago that um, I'm really good at supporting people with trauma. And that's little T trauma or capital T trauma. Um, it's just something I have a knack for and doing it in a way that is gracious to the person, um, gentle to the person that I'm working with. And it doesn't have to be like getting hit in the back of a head with a baseball bat, which I feel like a lot of things tend to lean that way when it comes to trauma. So in a nutshell, angry household, now trauma coach. <laughs> Oh, that's so amazing. I love that. I love your story. Thank you so much for sharing. And, and I think I, you know, I resonate with that as well, because as a teenager, um, you know, going through my parents' divorce at a younger age, and then just all the fallout from that, like, I was so angry. I mean, I, I would just do crazy, crazy stuff. I would see red and just break things, you know, for a lot of years. And, and I'm such a different person now. And, and really what turned my life around, like it started with acupuncture, but it really was like the NLP just shifted everything. And uh, so I resonate with your story and thank you. And, and, and so I guess I would love to hear your thoughts on how to explain NLP to firefighters, because I think the, it's really hard sometimes to explain NLP or what it is. And, and I would just love to get your thoughts on it. I just want to jam on that for a little bit. Yeah. So I think, okay. So I think the best way to explain this is diving into a bit of our neurology. So let's say we have two neurons, right? And they get connected to each other. So first, neuron A needs to fire off, and then it sends a message to neuron B for neuron B to do the thing, whatever that is. And so if we keep using that, that same connection, so A to B, A to B, A to B over and over again, our brain actually like hardwires that in and says that this must be the way it has to be done. And so we just go, okay, well, that's great when we're five, six, seven years old, you know, and growing up in high school and stuff. But what if that connection we created doesn't quite work for us anymore as an adult? And in fact, it starts getting in our way and it starts to really like prevent us from doing doing the thing we were either meant to do or we really want to do in life. Well, I think what NLP does is it enters in another possibility. So now here comes neuron C. And now with NLP, we can say, hey, instead of 
you know, the connection made between neuron A and B, we can be like, there's a C option. Do we want to give that one a go? I think we like, I think this could work. And so now instead we can fire neuron A and connect it to neuron C and NLP allows that connection to be made. And then NLP also helps us to sustain that connection. So now it's A to C, A to C, A to C. And now that becomes the new thing that's hardwired instead of the A to B connection. So that that A to C connection is now what's going to work for us today. It's going to work for us in getting that thing that we want or doing the thing that we want or being happier in, in whatever it is that we want to move forward with. And NLP allows for that option to be seen and then also to get that hardwired in. And I think that's really where the beauty of NLP comes in. Yeah, it's so powerful. And, and you know, one of my... One of my mentors once told me it's almost like when you're sledding and you keep going on the same sled track over and over and just gets super, like it gets bigger and deeper and deeper and deeper. Well, like you're saying, once we change the path of the sledding, it's like, it takes a little bit to build that groove, but now there's a new path and it's easy. Like A to C is just like, no problem. It's automatic actually. And yes, it, See, I would not have used that um, example because I grew up in Honolulu, Hawaii. So we don't have snow or I did not grow up sledding. But if you did, that is an exact perfect example. Oh, I love it. I love it. And I want to get your take on this one. Like, and so we have three practitioners trying to explain NLP here because it's going to be awesome. It's always a really hard concept to kind of explain too because it encompasses so many things. And I really appreciate just kind of that idea of also once you've kind of match that a to c connection recognizing that i have made this new connection once before like i did a to c and maybe i want to get even better at doing whatever the thing is and maybe there's just an a to d connection and let's explore that a little bit and then you get to try it and see if it works and understanding once you've kind of made some new connections and really understand how you can like refire and rewire habits or thought patterns or mindsets in your mind that you can continue to do that to just keep getting better um to me, NLP is just a great way of communication, and you communicate most with yourself. You're, if you say that you don't have a little voice inside your head that uh, communicates with you, you're lying. Uh, you are doing it right now. So just learning how to communicate with yourself and understand where you're at, like really recognizing the present moment and how you're feeling and what you're doing, and trying to figure out where you want to take that and where you want to go and recognizing how you fit into the world with everyone else. Oh, I love that. And so much, so powerful. And I think, I guess, Destiny, on, on the same subject, and, and we're just going to jam this a little bit longer, but I think, so we make the connection from A to C, and we've we've released B, I, you know, what happens to that? Does B just disappear? And I think that's that's kind of what people are saying. Like, well, what happens to B, right? I, I think what happens to B is it just lays dormant, right? Like, I think it it's it's not hardwired in anymore. So although it sticks around, it's not the thing that gets fired off. And I think it also, um, there, there's an opportunity when neuron A gets triggered for a pause where there's a, there's a moment where you're like, wait, do I wanna do C? Do I wanna do B? Do I wanna do D? And, and you can actually now decide for yourself what will help you move forward. Because that A to B connection was created when we needed it to be created to, to keep us in, in survival mode, to survive, right? And as an adult, sometimes that survival mode is the thing that you need to rely on again. And so if it means firing off B, great, go ahead, fire that off. But it's not the go-to anymore. It's not the, the, the default. Now the default is C. But there's still that moment that occurs where you're like, well, wait, do I even want to do C? What if I want to do D or E? And I think NLP gives you that space and that break and that pause to choose what actually will work for you. And it's not like you have to sit there and decide for like 30 minutes. It's really quick. But now you have all of the options, including your B. All right, check this out. Mountain Mind Tricks and the Wildland Wellness Foundation are coming together for this amazing collaboration. This is going to be the most powerful thing to come to the Wildland Fire community in a long time, I think. And that is, you know, master plant ceremonies, 
mixed with holistic medicine with acupuncture, chiropractor, so the breakthrough session, all these things coming into one to support you, the wildland firefighter, to help you regain your mental health, your physical health, and get back to peak performance as soon as possible. Because when we work with master plants and essential oils and acupuncture and chiropractic and mental emotional release, when we put all these together, it is a powerful transformational experience that really it's it's beyond words because once you're touched by the divine once you're in touch with that healing energy of the universe with that innate power for you to heal yourself there's no stopping it it's like a runaway train it's like you're gonna start healing you're gonna have a transformation that has this ripple effect that goes beyond just you and your family but to your crew to your fire station to your you know your workstation to your forest to your region to the community and really what we want to do is is give you the most amazing ceremonial experience and back that up with the integration how do you take those experiences and come back to 3d reality and implement them implement those lessons those realizations that are so deep and profound that your entire life changes how do you integrate those you know one of my great mentors once told me it's like you get a puzzle and all the pieces are all spread out but then you get to start putting that puzzle back together into a new way a new possibility a new way of being and that's that's what the foundation is working on you know the first retreat is the end of january of 2022 and if that's interesting to you i want you to go to the wildlandwellnessfoundation.com check that out and just schedule a call with melissa and See if it's a good fit. Again, that's wildlandwellnessfoundation.com. Yeah, I, I think that's so true. And and, and I want to get your take on NLP or the SRT techniques that you use. Because they are so fast, I have found that sometimes clients are like, wait, what? It's gone already? Like, yeah, it's gone already. I promise, like it's gone already. And there's almost like this suspended disbelief for a little bit of like, wait a minute, are you sure? And it's like, but I wasn't in therapy for 10 years. Like, I know it's kind of a, it's, <laughs> it's different, right? It's totally different. And so I want to get your take on this, on these techniques being so fast that sometimes it's hard to believe, isn't it? It is. It, it absolutely is very hard to believe until the person tries to do the thing again. So, uh, like when I work with a, a client, you know, sometimes they'll come in to me and they're like, Hey, I'm deathly afraid of doing a, a Facebook live. Right. And we'll break it down into even smaller steps. So it, you know, what does the step before that look like? And then the step before that, and I actually have them try to take that step and what there, there's all kinds of like, Anne, I loved when you said, like, if you don't hear that little voice in your head, you know, I'm like, no, no, the voice is talking all the time. And so what I'm trying to do is get that voice to trigger and say something so we know what it says. Then it gets cleared. So then I have them go and do the thing again. And I'm like, did you hear the voice? Did the voice say something? What did your voice say? And they're like, oh, no, this time it said, yeah, you got this. And I'm like, and there's the switch. And so they actually have to experience a little taste of it to go, oh, oh, that's what it is. Yeah, it's gone. That thing, it, it's not there anymore. And a, lo- a number of my clients will have told me, you know, I've been in therapy for years for this. And I was like, yes. And, I, and I'm not knocking therapy. It does work for some people. And I do believe that, you know, when we keep talking about the event that caused the trauma over and over again, like it anchors in to our head, into our brains. And so I'm like, well, we keep talking about it and then it keeps anchoring in. How do we actually heal it? And so using NLP and using SRT, although quick and sometimes like, did that really work? It does move things forward faster. And it's just because we're not talking about it. It, You know, we're not anchoring anything extra in. We're just like letting the stuff go and, and letting it just, like settle and and not be that default choice anymore yeah i think that's so important destiny of like we don't have to talk about the story over and over again maybe in nlp sometimes we talk about it once to get the process 
but then we release it. And now I think there's such a big difference between therapy and what we all do is that we release something and then we focus on the future. Like we release it and it's just, we got to focus on the future. That's it. And, you know, I know Dr. Joe Spinza talks about this so much of if you can focus on the present and also become your future, like this is such a different way of being than being stuck in the past. And, and I just want to get your take on that, like how different this is where we really do focus on the future more than anything, right? Absolutely. It's, and, and it's not saying that the thing that, that the trauma didn't happen. It's just saying that like, yes, we acknowledge that it happened. And now what, you know, like there are some people that have a trauma happen and then they move, they can keep on trucking and moving forward and they, they change their future to encompass and have that trauma serve them. And then there are others that don't choose to do that. And so it's kind of like, well, then what do you want to have happen instead? And some of them do keep looking to the past. And and it's almost like that, um, that analogy that when you're driving, you know, if you only, if you were driving, but you only kept looking in the rear view mirror, you're going to crash. And you're like, you got to stop looking at the rear view mirror so that you can see what's actually happening in front of you. And that's where I think NLP and SRT really helps us to move and focus on because that's where our life is going to happen. Like the present moment is where it is happening. And then whatever we do in the present moment is going to affect our future. So what, what do we want our future to look like? And it doesn't have to look like what's going on in our past to our present. It can change moment by moment, day by day to start shifting it. So our future can actually look drastically different. Like I can only imagine that angry child, if I just stayed angry, I would not be where I'm at right now. (laughs) Right. So there was a moment where I was like, this anger isn't working for me anymore. I need to do something about it. And luckily that something came, came upon me. And now it's, it's adjusted the trajectory of my future and my life. And you know, it's moment by moment making that decision of like, do I want to be angry or do I want to keep, keep doing this thing? And it's just, it's just that adjustment. And quite honestly, sometimes I do land back on anger and anger is one of the only emotions that will actually fight injustice. So like I'll use it, right? Like there are moments where I'm going to use it. However, the anger no longer controls me. I'm controlling it. And I think that's, that's the difference with the traumas as well. If the trauma controls you, that's one thing, but if you control it, that's another. Oh, it's so powerful, so empowering. And I think, you know, what comes up for me is I think sometimes we talk about these negative emotions and after doing enough of these sessions and working with people after and doing my own integration through all this work, I, I don't believe in negative emotions anymore. There's, there's hard emotions. Like I, I'll give it that, but I think because, because sometimes like some of the most beautiful art in the world in history was created by people working through something like sadness. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's um, like feeling and accepting and moving through these emotions. Like that's being a human. That's human. Like this is the whole yes. reason why we're here. And so I like, I love this. And, and uh, I just wanted to um, resonate with you a little bit on like the, the, I'm not sure negative emotions are real, but hard emotions are for sure. And, and, uh, and to even like step off of that, sometimes a hard emotion to me is not a hard emotion for you, right? So like for me, I don't like being sad. I don't like crying. And for me, it's actually hard to get there. Like I have to watch really sad movies or, you know, like really put myself in that place because my default is to try to get myself out of it. And so I know being human, sad is a hard emotion for me to feel. I've got friends that they will cry at the drop of a, a, a hat and they're like, whatever, I'm going to cry right now because I'm feeling sad. And I'm like, how do you do that? And so even that, that, oh, what's hard for me, I, it may not be hard for someone else. And so like, what if an emotion could just be an emotion and we don't put any extra meaning on it? It's not good, bad, right, wrong. There's no blame. There's no shame. It's just, this is the emotion because that's what it was named, I don't know, decades ago by some person that thought it should be called sad and you're like okay cool I'm feeling sad and whatever that process is for you to feel that feeling like rock on and go through that so the last couple years I had to quit coffee because coffee was like this 
liquid shot of anxiety for me. Like my heart would race. I could focus intently, but only for a couple hours and I would crash super hard. And my sleep was so off. I mean, I would be wandering the universe until, I don't know, three in the morning before I finally got to sleep. And then I had to get back out at six or seven in the morning. And I was groggy, I was tired. It just wasn't working for me. It's not that I was mad at coffee, I was just really disappointed. And so I ended up quitting coffee. And I've been searching for an alternative for a long time. And that's when I came across mud water. Mud water is this amazing, amazing tea. It's got masala chai in it, it's got cacao, lion's mane, cordyceps, chaga, reishi, cinnamon, turmeric, and Himalayan sea salt. And what's so amazing is that you feel the same energy, that same burst that you get from coffee, but it sustains all day. There's no crash, there's no headache, there's no dehydration. It's just this beautiful experience. And so yeah, I'm gonna say it, fuck your coffee. You gotta switch over to mud water because mud water will change your life. There's immune boosting properties, helps you focus with the lion's mane. There's one seventh of the caffeine compared to coffee. And so there's no jitters, there's no anxiety. It's just this beautiful experience with beautiful plants. So fuck your coffee. So if you want to try out mud water, I want you to go to mountainmindtricks.com slash mud water or go to the shop and click on the button. Again, that's mountainmindtricks.com slash mud water. So one of my favorite things about the mud water company is that they donate a percentage of their profits to the MAPS Institute. It's an organization that develops medical, legal, and cultural context for people to benefit from the careful uses of psychedelics. So the you know, MDMA psychedelic assisted therapy phase three trials, this is MAPS. And that's so important because there's been some amazing breakthroughs in the research with veterans and PTSD and uh, depression and all sorts of amazing things that they're doing. But it's so important to support this company. I want to go a little bit deeper into like this idea of NLP and energy and how like our emotions are energy, but also like, I just want to get your thoughts on how there's kind of a psychological way to see these things, but there's also maybe more of an energetic sense of, of baggage being something more of an energy inside of our energy field. I'm curious if your training ever talked about that or, or if that resonates with you at all, or what's that like? No, I, I, I haven't gotten like necessarily trained on it. However, I've, I've kind of been working these suspicions that I have and what I've noticed in working with clients and just human beings in general is like certain emotions carry like a different vibration and a different weight to them. So if you were to think about a time where you were really sad, there is a certain like feeling or a weight that you'll usually you'll feel it in like your shoulders or maybe in your stomach and then versus like happy where that weight just isn't there. It, it just shifts off. And so it's, it's almost like um, these emotions can also be linked to certain areas of the body. And that like, if you look at the Chinese acupuncture and the Chinese meridians, you see that there as well. Um, and so there's, there's, I'm like, there's gotta be something here about that. Like the, the weight of the, the emotion, the vibration of the emotion, the location of the emotion in the human body. And if we can identify that, well, then we can also release it. And so, although not formally trained, I just, I keep coming, coming up with like, well, what if, right. And, and how about this? And just checking these things out to see like, what could be attached to different areas of the body and and what can we do about it so that it can get released so it's not weighing us down and like for example I have this thing with my knee and it's driving me nuts I have a feeling when I go and talk to my coach she's gonna be like let's find out what it means to have some like a sore knee and it's gonna be something that's gonna be attached to an emotion that I'm like okay I can just release that and so it's like well I, there's got to be something to that there just has to be there's just too many studies out there, too many, like you could Google it, right? And a whole bunch of stuff is going to come out that it, it's, there's, there's something to it. Oh yeah. I love that so much. And 
One of the books I use so much with clients is uh, Heal Your Body from Louise Hay. And it's almost, she has mapped out exactly what you're talking about. And then she has affirmations to undo it. And it's like, oh my God, it works. It's just like yes. if you do some release work and then you follow up with some affirmations around that specific part of the body, it's like, whoa, there's some power here. And I, and I guess it, it, I still like, I don't even know what the right word is. I guess amazed or just always like, are you serious with the mind body connection and how strong and big it is? And it just, it's just one of my favorite things to talk about. Cause it's so amazing to me is how strong that mind body connection is. And, and I guess I want to get, um, Anne's take on this, like energy and emotions being in the body. Right. There's a big thing with trauma too. And, and we can name drop on, on books all day long. Um, but the body keeps the score is another incredible book that if you're really interested on how your body kind of manifests these energy from emotions and, and traumatic experiences that your body then holds on to and either creates soreness or weird like back pain or ticks or what whatever kind of shows up for you that you're really curious as to like why has this lasted so long why have I been to the doctor so many times and they just can't really find a reason to why these things keep happening to me so then you don't have a solution because they can't really identify that root cause and understanding that all of these experiences that we've had in our life especially with a lot of us firefighters it's like they, they come from some sort of trauma and I'll jump back in on that big t little t thing in a minute but if you've had an experience that has a lasting effect on you past like what a back injury would be able to heal, um, like if you've had a tweaked muscle, it takes between six and eight weeks to kind of get over that main pain point. If it lasts longer than that, it likely has some sort of psychological root to it. And whether that be we have fired that pattern so many times that when I start feeling really crappy and I'm agitated and I'm angry, my back starts to hurt. That A to B connection can wire that pain into your body so that just like your pain is consistent now. And some of the stuff that we can do is releasing some of the attachment from those traumatic memories that are now stuck as energetic connections in the body. And like we were talking about before, as far as NLP, we can tell the brain that there is another way to kind of reroute that message. You don't have to have back pain for the rest of your life. You can try and find and identify that root cause and release the events and the emotions around those and start from a new connection to start creating the things that you want to create. And I just want to touch on real quick, as far as education goes, the big T, little T trauma is something that I have learned in some of my practices as well and do teach. A big T is a big traumatic incident that happens. You're in a car crash, um, some, something happens to you on the line and you get really hurt. So that's a big traumatic injury that's a big isolated incident that happens and then the little t traumas are little things that start to add up consistently over time whether that's when you're in a child and you're really learning how to like see how life works and you keep getting you know something happens with your parents when you do this one thing and that negative reaction just teaches you that that one thing you do is bad if you keep asking for the cookie and you keep getting slapped that's something that you well I better not ask for things anymore so that's something that kind of redevelops inside your body as it's a need that's not being met as a child so you have then compensated to learn some survival techniques that then kind of establishes almost that little bit of a traumatic response and that absolutely has an effect as an adult like we said from developing a pattern that worked as a kid and maybe now it doesn't work so much as an adult that was beautiful. Like the way that you explained everything that you just said, I'm like, yes, I was over here like clapping. Um, and, and so I was like, thank you. And also thank you for supporting me and explaining the little T and the big T because I think that is very important context, especially for this podcast. The foundation of mountain mind tricks is the breakthrough sessions for wildland firefighters. And it's one of the most rewarding things I've ever done in my entire life is to guide somebody through an awakening experience, remembering that they have the power to heal and giving them the tools to release the anger, sadness, fear, hurt, and guilt from their past and to truly release it, to let it go. And when I see these transformations in my clients, it's like night and day. There's before the breakthrough session and then there's after. And there's just so many times that their transformation touches me that I, I cry. Like it, it's so powerful and joyful to see that transformation inside them. And, and there's, there's so many modalities out there. 
there is acupuncture and traditional therapy and plant medicine and but I love the breakthrough session I think it's an amazing adjunct to all these other things or even western medicine and the breakthrough session is so important to me because it's what changed my life it's what allowed me to completely let go of my anxiety and to move forward and to become the healer that I am today to start my own company mountain mind tricks like that's that's because the breakthrough session without that there wouldn't be any of this and so if you're interested in a breakthrough session to really overcome the blocks in your life to let it all go to really step into your light and be who you know you could be if you want that to happen for you just go to mountainmindtricks.com go ahead and click that button alternative mental health scroll through there if it looks like something you want let's let's schedule a discovery session let's just chat about it let's have a talk to make sure it's a good fit so again, go to mountainmindtricks.com and click the alternative mental health button. So I think the deal with emotions too is just there it's an expression of energy. You know, everything is energy and the thoughts that we have in our brain then kind of communicate with our body and that kind of produces a feeling, something some sort of energetic motion in our body. And if we can just kind of understand that like Thomas said, they're not necessarily negative. They're not bad. They're not something to be afraid of or ashamed of or anything like that. There's like appropriate outbursts, if you can even call them that, but it ex appropriate expressions of these emotions. If you start laughing hysterically at a funeral, probably not an acceptable expression of that emotion. Um, but they are just like initiations of energy. And we need to understand that because you are having a certain emotion, just because we have labeled that as, I don't know, sad or whatever it is, that that's just we, what we're calling that type of energy. And I think a lot of our kind of intentions and communications with clients as we do our work is initiating change. And the things that we have intention to do is just to guide people either change in their mindset of Yes, I understand that these aren't negative emotions. It's okay to be angry and utilize that in a healthy way and guide that energy in a way that's going to be helpful for me, but also to just kind of change some of like the really intense outbursts of it. Like how do you manage this huge onset of energy? Do you push it in a certain direction? Do you channel it in a creative way? Do you utilize talking to other people like friends and family or a counselor or a coach, something like that? How do you utilize some of that energy that has come up? And Destiny, I wanted to get a concept from you of the most common like bullshit stories you hear from people since you are a professional in identifying bullshit. So what is the biggest thing that kind of comes up for you that's kind of pulls people down that we want to change some energy with and how do you work with them? Mm, great question. So the one I see most often tends to look like the imposter syndrome type of stories. Like I can't do this. Who am I to do this thing? Um, I don't deserve blah, blah, blah. All of that <coughs> bullshit there. Um, the other ones I do tend to see are like the I can't, right? So especially uh, revolving around money, uh, like I can't make this money. I I can't work another job. But all of that, just I think money is a big um, determining factor of of our lives. But also, it it holds a lot of our traumas and in, in like in its story, in the money story. And so the way that I work with clients on it is they, they usually know why they're coming to me. They're like, yeah, I've got this bullshit story about, you know, making more money or um, having a healthy relationship with my husband. And I'm like, okay, let's dive into that. And it starts with, you know, what's, what's bothering you right now about this thing. So for example, uh, one of my clients has not been able to have a healthy relationship for a while and she, she wants one. She, and she, she just, she just wants one. And, you know, when I ask her, how do you feel about that? She tells me all of the feelings that come up for her. And then what I do is I ask her, when was the first time that you remember feeling those feelings? And it's usually before the age of 18, right? And she'll take me back to that time. And I just ask her in a couple of sentences, right? We don't have to dive too deep into it just to give me some context how old were you and what was going on? And so she'll tell me. And usually that's 
the beginning or if they're if they're aware enough that is the trauma that is the thing that caused the shift for them in regards to this problem that they're dealing with right now and so going through either using nlp and doing the timeline therapy technique or using srt which is subconscious release technique i help them release the that energy that is trapped within that emotion so that it no longer anchors them now they're kind of free to look at this moment in time from a different lens and say, oh, well, you know, if that thing didn't happen, then this wouldn't happen, this wouldn't happen, this wouldn't happen. Those were really great things. Or they release it and they go, you know what, that still sucks, but now it doesn't have control over me anymore. So it's taking them back from where they are currently and going back into that to find that moment where this trauma was caused and releasing it from that moment. So releasing the energy of it and the the hold that it has on them so that it doesn't have it anymore. It doesn't erase the event from happening, but it just erases that anchored, heavy, weighed down feeling um, that they have. Yeah, so you can have an emotion or a memory without having um, like any thought about it. You can have, I can recall something that I ate for breakfast yesterday that's very neutral and just not have any overwhelming energetic feelings about it and just recognize that even through trauma, how it has affected us from the past into the future to still understand that they are just memories. They are just things that happen and they don't have to affect our mindset and our, and our kind of intentions going forward. That is super powerful. Exactly. Yeah. And what's even, even better is like a lot of the clients I work with, it goes back even before, you know, this current lifetime that they're in. So they may have what one of my clients calls like a spiritual contract that they signed lifetimes ago that this that they're gonna go through uh the learnings of unworthiness so here they are lifetime to lifetime feeling unworthy and then here's this trauma that was caused you know back when they were like three or four that has to do with unworthiness and it's like well that's cool and all but like why don't we just go and release the contract or the signing of the contract or when that happened and maybe you can pick something different the next time and let's play with that so now we can just like shift that whole like I don't know forward movement of your life and so we just wind up kind of diving into even that because some of this is like how does a three or four year old know what unworthiness is like how how does that happen and so just exploring that I'm like well what if and luckily for this particular client she's like yeah what if and we just dove into this whole like series of it and it was just fascinating and amazing and just shifting that um like oh my gosh, I'm so proud of all of the things that she's doing right now. Oh, isn't that the best when our clients, you see them go forward and do things that surprise you as the practitioner even. It's just like, oh my God, I can't believe how much exponential growth you have. Like this is so powerful. And it's just, that's just, I love hearing those stories. It's, I, I love it. Thank you. Yeah. And I think it, sometimes it's even uh, like, it amazes me when it amazes them. And like, they're almost shocked about it. And I'm like, of course you did this thing. Of course you did. I want to hear more about the SRT technique and kind of what's the process. And and I think um, me or Anne will figure it out. I think we're kind of getting closer to being ready to to blow something out here on live on the podcast. That's exciting. Um, but I'm, I'm curious, like, what what's the process? Like, how does the SRT work? One, it's it's very much like what I was explaining when I work work something backwards with a client, right? Someone comes to me and they're like, this is what I want to work on. Uh, maybe it's the I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, or or let's take Anne's example of like, you know, some like uh, I shouldn't ask for help or support or I shouldn't ask for anything, right? I, I'm going to sit with the client and I'm going to ask them, well, how do you feel about not being able to ask for help or support or ask for anything? And they're going to tell me. And I will admit a lot of um, clients do start off telling me like what they think. And I'm like, no, what do you feel? And so sometimes I will bring up like the emotion, um, that emotion circle so that they can figure out what it is that they feel about it because most of them haven't talked about it. They haven't sat down to go, I don't, how do I feel about not being able to ask for support? And so I show them that emotion wheel so that they can express what they are feeling. 
And, you know, there's been a couple of clients I've worked with that I've actually had to put the faces the, that they teach kids as well. And I'm like, that's cool, right? Like, however it is that you need to, to be able to convey to me how you feel about this thing and not being able to ask for support. And then I'm like, okay, let's go back and figure out when you first remember feeling these feelings. And a couple of things can happen there. Either boom, right away, they figure out what, what, what was going on, when the first time was, how old they were and all of that. Sometimes they're like, I don't think this is just one time. I think I was like, this was happening between elementary to maybe freshman year of high school. So that's like a range of time. And so we'll go back and I'm just going to be like, okay, I just want you to like, just remember that time. I'm not telling them they have to go back and they have to be in that time. But I'm like, I want you to just tell me what you remember about that time. And how how were you feeling? Right? Like you're saying that you maybe you feel frustrated or annoyed with having to ask for support. Well, I want you to tell me what that what that little you was thinking. Right? So what was going through your head? um, When your mom slapped your hand and told you you couldn't get a cookie? Uh, What was going through your head and the thoughts going through your mind when grandma slapped your hand and said, you can't have that cookie. And we'll walk through that process of finding all of the things that they were thinking. And normally one of those things, I'm like, okay, there's an offshoot here. There's, there's more to this particular uh, thought than even I think they know. And so I'll dive in a little bit more. We'll ask them some questions to really clarify what that looks like. Then all, what, that, what that means is now we have the, the programming, the, the thought process uh, that they have created for themselves, that, that neuron B that they are firing after their hand gets slapped, that's neuron A, right? Now neuron B is this thought that they, they continually have about, okay, now I can't ask for support. That this is the deciding factor. I've made this decision. This is now the thing that I'm going to carry on for the rest of my life. Now, again, as a child, we're not considering that, well, we're carrying this on for the rest of our lives. But in that moment, that is what we're doing. And so now we clear all of the energy around that. So there's actually a list that I worked through that have um, a bunch of, it has a bunch of emotions on it. And it is funny enough, Thomas, it is listed as positive and negative emotions. Um, However, that's more just for the technique that we need to use along with that section of emotion. So I go through this list and I create phrases for them to release. And what I mean by that is I will have them take a deep breath in and hold. And while they're holding their breath, I'm going to tell them this phrase, which they repeat to themselves in their mind. So not out loud, but just to themselves. And when they're done saying this phrase in their mind to themselves, they exhale. And then I go in and I do another phrase for them. And what I'm doing is I'm pairing the emotion with the phrase to release the energies that that's anchoring in this thought process. And then we come back like to the present time. They kind of like, like I said, sometimes they go into a light trance, um, but very rarely does that happen. And so, um, you know, if they do great, I bring them back into the room and I'm like, Hey, how do you feel? What, where are you at? And then we do what we call fill-ups, which are very much like affirmations where now I'm like, no, let's do this instead. And I usually record my fill-ups so that they, I can send it to them and they can listen to it, you know, over and over again. Other practitioners don't, but I just like to have them have another tool in their tool belt to support them during the week. And being able to like keep on trucking and moving forward even between our sessions. Wow, it sounds so beautiful. Essentially, like a combination of, of you know, finding the first event, a little bit of breath work, some affirmations, and release work. Like that's really that's really interesting and cool. It's so, it's it's different, but the same as timeline therapy or mental emotional release. It's it's just a different way of accessing it. Is, is yes the way I'm seeing it. And that's so cool. Yep. And right on the money. So cool. I want to guide you through natural wellness and holistic medicine, which means using products like essential oils, essential vibes, glutathione mouthwashes, or even reading books. 
There's so many products out there that can help us. Supplements, essential oils. There's so many things about the doTERRA lines of essential oils that I use every day, like lemon to detox my body and help me hydrate, like on guard to give me that extra edge in my immune system with the pandemic going, uh, balance to keep me grounded and moving forward in my life. I use the oils every single day, morning, afternoon, night. One of the biggest things they help me with is sleep. I sleep so well because I'm, you know, I'll lay on the lavender, I'll lay on the balance, I'll feel so grounded and sleepy and it's lights out. And I know the wildland fire community just struggles so much with sleep, really the lack of it, right? On top of that, there's books. There's, I've written three major books for the wildland fire community and, and I want you to try them out, give them a read, get the ebook, get the paperback, whatever suits you. But there's Overcome Anxiety Like a Hero, really teaches you how to get into a flow state. Awakened by Heart Fire is really the spiritual aspects of wildland fire. And the Heart Fire Anthology, the guided meditations, the Heart Fire Method will completely change your life. And of course, Six Minutes for Excellence, that is, a guidebook for wildland firefighter excellence, peak performance, mindset, all those things. So go to mountainmindtricks.com, check out the store, check out essential oils, essential vibes, uh, go to the publishing tab, check out the books. Natural wellness is all about taking one step today that makes us 1% better. 1% better today, 1% better tomorrow, and 1% better the next day and the next day. One little habit adds up to moving an entire mountain with our health. That's what I want to guide you through. The essential oils, essential vibes, books, supplements, whatever you need, I'm here for you. So just go ahead and go to mountainmindtricks.com and click on the shop and go to essential oils, essential vibes, or go to the publishing tab and, and check out the books we've got. So Destiny's going to give us a in-depth little exercise of her SRT technique. And if you as a listener want to really make the most benefit out of this, I would recommend kind of aligning um, your thoughts and your kind of journey with this with her responses as I go through it and um, kind of figure out how it's going to work for you. So if you can follow along, get yourself in a good spot where you can make some time for it, this will be super beneficial. Let's get into it. All right. Let's do this. Hi, Anne. Hello, Destiny. Ready to rock? Yes. <laughs> okay. So tell me, um, what's going on? Like, what's coming up for you right now that you're like, yeah, I, I want to release this? So it's around a specific trauma that happened a couple of years ago for me. Um, it was a car accident that I attended as a as a medic. Um, and I was off duty at the time, and it happened to be a rollover accident that uh, my friend was in the car, and I didn't realize it when I pulled up on it. So. Mm, yep. Yep. Okay. So. Um, in this moment, like, I, I'm going to skip the entire part of like how she's feeling right now, because she immediately took me back to exactly what the event was. And so um, now what I'm going to ask you is, okay, Anne, so here you are, right? There's this car accident, you're attending as a medic, this rollover and like, holy shit, your friends in the car. What's going through your mind? What are you thinking? I'm thinking it's a little bit back and forth of panic, because I know who this is. And remember your training, you know what to do with this. And how did you feel? Anxious. A little bit fearful. Anything else? Uh, some of it's scared, but it's still kind of under that fearful category. Sure. Okay. Okay. So, Anne, I'd like you to go back, uh, probably before the age of 18, to the very first time where you felt anxious and fearful and maybe a little bit scared, okay? And I want you to identify the, the earliest memory that you have of feeling anxious, fearful, and a little bit scared. And let me know when you have that memory. Okay, I think I've got it. Okay, go ahead and just tell me how old you were, and, and just in a couple of sentences, tell me what was going on. I think I was about seven, and there was a bunch of chaos in my household. There was both my parents, my sister, and my grandmother. Um, and it was another medical incident. Okay. So here's seven-year-old Anne, bunch of chaos going on in the house, and a, a medical incident happening. What was that seven-year-old Anne thinking? I was very scared because it was unknown. 
and none of the emotions that anyone else was portraying was anything good. It was all fearful and chaos. So that's what I was taking in. Are you? Ha- do you happen to be an empath, Anne? Yes. Okay. So you were feeling all of the the stuff from everyone else. Yes. What were you thinking about what you were feeling or what you were seeing? I wanted to help in some way. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to try and mitigate even the littlest bit of some of these really intense feelings. Mm. Anything else? It feels like I just wanted it all to be over. Like, I don't like this experience and I just don't want to be here. Okay. Okay. Great. You're doing, you're doing so well, by the way, like you're hitting this all right on the money. Okay. So what we're going to do next is we're going to clear the energy that is trapped by this, this event that happened when you were seven. And so the way that I do this is I'm going to tell you, go ahead, take a deep breath in and hold while you're holding your breath. I am going to tell you a phrase. Okay. And when, when I give you this phrase, what I want you to do with it is to then think it or say it to yourself in your mind. So not out loud, but to yourself. And then when you're done thinking it or saying it to yourself in your mind, I want you to exhale loud enough so that I can hear you. And when you exhale loud enough so that I can hear you, that's going to tell me to move on to the next phrase. Okay. And then we're going to do the process again, where it's a deep breath in and hold. I say a phrase, you repeat the phrase to yourself, and then you exhale loud enough to, for me to hear you. And then we'll just keep on trucking. Okay. Okay. All right. So in regards to this first phrase that we're going to do, um, it's, it is in regards to that event specifically. Okay. Okay. All right. So, Anne, let's practice with this first one. Go ahead, take a deep breath in and hold. I release all anger with, I don't want to be here. Boom. Look at that. You're a pro. You've got this. That's exactly what we're going to do for the, the remaining, the remainder of the phrases. All right. So go ahead, take a deep breath in and hold again. I release all anxiety with, I don't want to be here. All right. Deep breath in and hold. I release all dread with, I don't want to be here. Beautiful and great job. Deep breath in and hold. I release all fear with I don't want to be here. Good. Deep breath in and hold. I release all hate with I don't want to be here. Good. Deep breath in and hold. I release all pain with I don't want to be here. Good. Now I'm just going to ask you to take a deep breath in and release it out. And while you're doing that, just shake out your shoulders. Good. Good. You're doing a great job. Really good job. All right. Here we go. Go ahead. Take a deep breath in and hold. I release all rage with I don't want to be here. Beautiful. Deep breath in and hold. I release all resentment with, I don't want to be here. Good. Deep breath in and hold. I release all shame with, I don't want to be here. Good. Deep breath in and hold. I release all stress with, I don't want to be here. Good. Deep breath in and hold. I release all terror with I don't want to be here. Good. Deep breath in and hold. I release all worry with I don't want to be here. Good. And then again, deep breath in and out, but shaking out those shoulders. Beautiful. Excellent. So the next set of phrases that we're going to do, you're going to do the exact same thing, but they're just going to sound a little bit different. So I just wanted to let you know that so you're not focused on that piece, okay? 
All right, go ahead, take a deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with calm with I don't want to be here. Good. Deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with giving with I don't want to be here. Beautiful. Deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with gratitude with I don't want to be here. Good. Deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with happiness with I don't want to be here. Good. Deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with hope with I don't want to be here. Very good. Deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with love with I don't want to be here. Deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with open with I don't want to be here. Excellent. Deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with peace with I don't want to be here. Good. Deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with safe with I don't want to be here. Excellent. And last one, deep breath in and hold. I release all blocks with trust with I don't want to be here. Great. Nice job. Like you rock that. Go ahead and just breathe normal. Good. Excellent. So you know that thing that we were talking about that happened um, with your friend? Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? The thing that happened? Oh, okay. All right. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So now what I'm going to do is uh, what we call Phillips. And so these are very similar to affirmations, but they just sound a little bit different. Um, and you're going to do the exact same thing that you've been doing. So taking a deep breath in and hold, I'm going to give you a phrase. These phrases will sound different. And, um, and then you're going to exhale loud enough for me to hear you so that, you know, I can uh, tell you what the next set of affirmations are. Um, like I mentioned, normally I will record this and then send this to you afterwards. But since it's on the podcast, you can just come back here and listen to it over and over again. How does that sound? That sounds excellent. All right. Let's rock this then. So I feel like, and this is where I will, I will say, like, I kind of take a little bit about what they said and mix it in with a little bit of what I feel like will support them in moving forward. And so, you know, Anne did mention like it was a very chaotic thing that was happening, um, and especially when she was seven year old and in her household. So I'm looking at that like, okay, what can counter the chaos? What could we use instead of that to support her? And so I kind of, I kind of like feel around for what that might look like for her and then we can move forward with these uh, fill ups for her, okay? All right, so here we go, and let's do this. Go ahead, take a deep breath in and hold. I am so happy, thankful, and grateful that I am safe. Good. Deep breath in and hold. I'm so happy, thankful, and grateful. I gently release that which makes me feel unsafe. Beautiful. Deep breath in and hold. I'm so happy, thankful, and grateful that I am protected. Good. Deep breath in and hold. I'm so happy, thankful, and grateful that I am comfortable and calm. Good. Deep breath in and hold. I'm so happy, thankful, and grateful that my family and friends are safe. Deep breath in and hold. I'm so happy, thankful, and grateful. I allow myself to be at ease. Good. Deep breath in and hold. I'm so happy, thankful, and grateful. I find safety in the little moments. Good. Deep breath in and hold. I'm so happy, thankful, and grateful. I am safe in my body. 
And last one, go ahead and take a deep breath in and hold. I'm so happy, thankful, and grateful. I breathe and I feel safe. Awesome. Go ahead and breathe normal. And tell me how you feel. As a client, I will kind of come back to that, like, weight of the feeling. Like, a lot of that feeling creates tension and heat and stuff in my chest. And at this point, there's none of that. Banging. Yes. Look at you go, Anne. Look at you go. Whee! So cool. <laughs> Thank you for allowing this to happen on the podcast and for sharing these moments of yourself and that insight of what was going on for you and for sharing that. Thank you. Absolutely. And, and I hope that somebody can use this either, you know, following along with the practice and kind of guiding themselves through their own imagination there and really kind of working through the process and understanding that being present in the moment and kind of detaching some of that really intense emotional contract with that old event with some breathing with some intention with a guided with a coach can be really really powerful wow thank you so much to both of you and what a beautiful technique you have destiny and and uh i actually did the phillips with Anne, and like i could feel a really big energy shift for myself and it's just um, breathing with the affirmations, breathing with uh, letting go, like, wow, I really love this combination. And um, it's just, it's, it's easy to let go. It's just easy to let go. And that's, that's so powerful, isn't it? Yes, it sure can be. I mean, I, I don't think that was what I was taught earlier on, but finding out that this is a way I'm like, yes, thank you. There's a way to easily release yeah. this. Is, uh, is there anything else you want to share about your experience, Anne, or, or do you feel complete uh, before we start kind of wrapping up here? Um, I really, really appreciate kind of like the affirmation side of it, too, because that just solidifies, you know, some of the release of the energy, I think. And then it just once you release something energetically, something else needs to come in. You know, it's we can't create or destroy energy, but once you release some of that negative stuff, something else has to come in. And if you get to choose those really positive affirmations and anchoring into safety and really like making yourself whole again with some of those um, like guided affirmations, it just, it, it, it feels very complete. It feels very like whole and reaffirming. And it's, that's just awesome. Awesome. I love it. I love it so much. Destiny, is there anything else you want to share about the SRT technique or, um, you know, we're, we're going to kind of wrap up here with where can we find you? Um, where can people get a hold of you and all those things? Yeah. Uh, so with the SRT technique, uh, this was created by SRT Global by a woman named Coral Grant, who is phenomenal. And, you know, I'm so grateful and happy to have stumbled across this and also to have shared this experience with both you, Thomas and Anne and your audience. So again, thank you so much for allowing me to be here today and having me today. Um, as far as where you can find me, I am on Instagram and Facebook, um, both of those under at your magical destiny. Um, and then, you know, if you want to reach out and DM me there, I, I actually respond to my DMs a lot faster than I do to my emails. So those would be great places to reach me at for sure. Beautiful, beautiful. And do you have a website by chance? I actually don't. Um, I know that sounds funny and people are like, oh my God, you don't. I'm like, no, because a lot of my clients all come from word of mouth. So I don't really need one. Um, so no, I don't have one. Beautiful. Perfect. And so for everybody listening, please reach out to Destiny if you're working through something and, you know, hit her up on Instagram and, and do some SRT and some release work and, and just uh, thank you so much, Destiny, for an amazing interview. I think we covered some really interesting topics. We got to do some release work. Like, it's just what a powerful hour we've had together. And I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you again. I, it, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, I just wanted to say I really appreciate, Destiny, your your own opinions and your own concepts of bringing something new um, to my idea of practice and how things work and, and introducing me to something that's just as valuable in just a little bit different way. Because like we said, we all practice NLP, but it's all a little bit different. We all have our own um, really special techniques. And I just wanted to say thank you for working with me today and allowing me to be vulnerable and, and showing up and showing 
uh, some of our listeners that this work is difficult sometimes, but it is very rewarding and it can be um, really well done with the right person. So build some rapport, reach out to Destiny. Uh, I may call you in the future even because even coaches need coaches. So agree. And I agree a hundred percent. Yes. And you're welcome. And again, thank you both. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to the show and we'll catch you on the next one. And I hope you're out there getting some fire assignments early and getting ready for this season that's upcoming. Oh my God. I think the outlook is looking pretty, pretty busy down South. So here we go.